Hello, my fellow Ripplers. Welcome to Chris Miles Money Show. Season eight has begun. Welcome to 2022. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I am Chris Miles, your anti-financial advisor. Welcome to our show that's for you and about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money, you want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom, cash flow, and prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life that you love with those that you love. But most importantly, guys, it's not just about getting rich, it's about living a rich life because as you're blessed financially, you can have a greater impact in the lives of others. And thank you so much today for allowing me to create that ripple effect through you. Thank you for tuning in, for binging, sharing, and making 2021 amazing. And uh, I look forward to a great 2022 because of you guys. So thank you so much. Hey, as a quick reminder, be sure to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. The, the, I was going to say the Chris Miles Money Show. That's not it. And subscribe to Money Ripples with Chris Miles, a YouTube page. Go there, subscribe today. And uh, not just that, but if you want to follow the rest of people just like you, other Ripplers like ourselves, you can actually go to Facebook to the Money Ripplers page. So go look up Money Ripplers on Facebook if you're a Facebook user and go check that out now. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys. So, I, you know, everybody's wondering, of course, like, okay, we've had 2021. The stock market just ended up 23% for the year. Guys, and remember, we were talking about it possibly crashing. Now, I said in 2021, my prediction was, who the heck knows? I said, if there's inflation, it could drive the market up. And that actually did happen, didn't it? It actually did get driven up by inflation, and it continues to be driven up by inflation. Now, the real question is, is what is going to happen in 2022? And the truth is, is guys, I don't have a crystal ball. You know, we, we don't really know. Um, shorter term is so much easier to predict the longer term. Uh, but here's what things, here's what we are looking for, right? Because you got to remember, there's two separate things here. There's the stock market, for those of you that are wondering if you should bail out yet or not, or be in it. Um, and then there's the other aspect of what about the economy? Just so you know, the economy and the stock market don't always coincide. In fact, often they do their own things. Because we could be in a recession and the market could stay flat or go up. Vice versa, we could be booming and the market, stock market could come down, right? Uh, we've seen evidence of that. Even the 1990s, you know, we saw evidence of that in the stock market. We were hitting recessions and it didn't really take a big dip in the early 90s there, um, early to mid 90s. Um, and then even later on, now we saw things like Y2K took a, took a decent dip, right? Took a little dive. But you know what? It's interesting because as the, the economy was recovering, actually recovered post 9-11, Pre-9-11, the economy was weak, but then post-9-11, after that, everybody started getting, you know, in it together, in it for, you know, just in it and unified and everybody was producing and working and the economy was booming. But the reason that 2002 was the worst year wasn't because of the economy, because that was doing better. It was actually because everybody was fudging their numbers. There's like the Arthur Andersons of the world and the WorldComs and the Enrons and all those people that were lying about their numbers. Um, creating mass chaos and confusion. As a result, no one could, you know, no investor could trust the numbers of, of the profits that were being reported. So as a result, everything tanked. You know, that was a year it actually dropped about 22, 23%, if I recall. And so we saw 2002 drop, even though the economy was strengthening. It was actually good. So funny thing is, 9-11 actually boosted the economy, not contracted it, okay? So again, these can work separately of each other. So we do want to look at both because they can influence each other in some ways. What influences the stock market? Stock market is primarily influenced by really just how investors feel, right? It really is based on emotions and how they see companies' profitability going. Now, if they see anything that can risk a company's profitability, right, their ability to earn more money, then it can contract. If they don't, if they don't see that, they see that there's a, no end in sight, they're going to keep buying like crazy. We saw a really weird thing in 2021 with the stock market because the, the market just kept booming. Now, most people would use traditionally the, what's called the, the PE ratio or price to earnings ratio. They would use that. Um, that PE ratio just says, hey, what's the stock price compared to their earnings? Ideally, in a good world, you know, or in, a, in a perfect world, right? In a, in a predictable world, 
um, the PE ratios as they, as they, whatever they do, they go up, then obviously the stock has to come back down to bring that price back down to a good value. If that PE ratio keeps going up, it says it's like overvalued. If it goes down, it goes really low, then it's undervalued. But in this, the last several years, those PE ratios have skyrocketed, right? For these companies. Now, what most people don't realize is that the SP 500 is not representative of the total stock market of all the industries. Now, some of the big companies like your Teslas and your Apples and, and a lot of these companies here are Microsofts and people like that, Amazon, right? All of these companies have been booming, but a lot of the littler companies, those that are down below them in the industry have been tanking. So the interesting thing is in 2021, a lot of stocks actually dropped. They actually dropped in value. They weren't as big as what you saw in the S&P or like the NASDAQ, which is tech heavy, right? So remember that even when you're looking at these markets, just like we saw a huge boom from these bigger companies that sway the S&P 500 because they do it you know, based on how big the companies are, now we're going to start seeing what might be a correction of that, okay? Now, of course, if with the inflation, if they keep driving up prices and people keep paying the prices, the higher prices, they skyrocket, they can keep their earnings up, stock market would be fine. But that doesn't mean it won't hurt the economy. Here's the thing with the economy. The economy is separate than the stock market. The thing that drives the economy is how much flow of money is there? Is money flowing? Now, we already seen the feds have been printing money. They've been bailing out, you know, as they've been buying up all these bonds and mortgage-backed securities. You know, they've been pumping tons of money in this economy, which has skyrocketed our inflation, right? The feds have been doing that. Why? To keep the money going, to keep the flow going. And as much as that money keeps flowing, the economy is strong. When money contracts, meaning that when money stops flowing, people stop spending money as much as people stop, as banks especially, this is most important, not just people spending money, but banks stop lending. That's when things contract in the economy, which could also affect the stocks. Now, it doesn't have to do that. Like It can still keep pumping out money, but if they start skyrocketing interest rates, right, which drives some of the, the expenses up in companies that drives profits down, at least in the investor's mind, and they start selling off those stocks, right? You can, hopefully you're kind of with me here. It's, it's an interesting correlation that even over the last 20 years, I don't fully understand, right? I just know enough to be a little bit dangerous. I used to trade in the stock markets, but it's because of crap like this <laughs> that got me to stop. Uh, even though I did a decent job, uh, the problem is, is that it is unpredictable. And it's really just a day-by-day -day thing. This is why I taught swing trading. This is why we only did trades for a few days to maybe a few weeks and then got out. We wouldn't try to buy and hold anything because it's too risky. The problem is, is that almost everybody's talking about buying and holding in the retirement funds. You don't go and trade your retirement funds necessarily. A few of you might, but for the vast majority of people out there, they're just letting their money ride and hope for the best. So yeah, we've had a great, huge swing up, um, humongous, right? Uh, over a 13.6% average for the last 13 years now, the stock market's been up. That's a real rate of return, not the average return, but the real actual average yield of the stock market has been 13.6%, when historically, it doesn't usually do much better than 8%. So we're already way overbought. Everything's way bigger. But again, the stock market can keep going up if they keep money flowing. Now, what we're seeing is the feds are talking about backing off all those things. Now, if they start backing that off and raising interest rates here in 2022, which there's a prediction they'll raise at least one, if not more, that will mean you'll start to see stocks start to taper off a bit. It may not go down, but it might slow the growth. Um, other factors too is how much inflation is there? Because inflation keeps going up, there's a point where people say enough's enough. I can't afford it. You know, it's funny because everybody's been talking about minimum wages going up, right? But of course, what they do, they drive up the other costs. Here's one thing to look for for inflation. Don't look at just the consumer price index. That has been manipulated so much, it's false. Look more at the, what's called the producer price index. The producer price index is really about the cost of goods that companies have to buy to produce materials or produce goods. If those things keep skyrocketing, they're going to have to drive up prices and middle America and lower class America will suffer this year as a result if that keeps going up. So we're already seeing that happening. We're already seeing, you know, in California, people are renting out rooms rather than houses because it's getting so ridiculously expensive. By the way, if there's ever a real estate softening, I think it will be on the West Coast. Um, you'll see that, and maybe in the Northeast too as well, where it's been overbought for so long. It's been overvalued. And so if their wages can't keep up, same thing. 
Uh, I think the big thing that's going to be is we probably won't see wages, people's you know, actual working wages go up nearly as much as what we'll see on the inflationary side, which is a danger because if people can't afford to keep spending, they can't afford to keep doing these things, you know, you're at high risk. So again, coming back to what is it, you know, 2022, I, I do think there's going to be more inflation. Uh, it's going to keep going. Uh, it's possible this could eventually lead to stagflation, which is worse, right? This is when people say enough's enough. They can't do it. This is what happened in the late seventies and early eighties. Now, um, when Reagan came in office and they got Paul Volcker coming in as the fed president, he was strict. He jacked up interest rates all the way up past 18% and people were freaking out, right? Um, I mean, that's when we heard about mortgage rates being over 20% and things like that. It's because of what they did. They were very aggressive trying to raise rates to curb that inflation and get it under control fast, um, tank the stock market for a little bit, and eventually it came back. So be watching to see what the feds do, um, but it's, it's not just what they say out of their mouths. Don't pay attention to that. It doesn't matter. It's what they're actually doing with the money. Is there flow of money? Is money still flowing? Are people still spending money? Or are they going to start holding on to it out of fear? When that happens, that's when you see the economy contract. And that's when you could also see potentially the stock market do the same, especially if it affects companies' earnings. Uh, so here's, here's my two, bit, two bits for 2022, for whatever it's worth, right? Whatever, whatever you guys think. Um, all of this, right? All unpredictable. How do you expect to have financial freedom if you keep putting your money in unpredictable places. And you might even say, yeah, Chris, this is why we're going for digital or crypto or, or NFTs. Guys, sorry to say this, and maybe I'm gonna be a little bit more blunt this year in 2022, but that's a gamble, guys. Complete, total gamble. I think digital currency is gonna be around for, it for a long, long time, if not forever, if this is not the trend for, from now on. But uh, do not underestimate the power and the effect of governments trying to control you right? Don't, don't, don't be too surprised when they try to come in and try to shut things down. Okay. Um, again, speculation, gambling. This is why, you know, when, whenever I look at, when we do investing, this is why we talk about the alternative investments. And I'm not talking about alternative, like investing your own money in the stock market, which you could do, of course. I'm talking more about how are you buying real tangible assets? Because if there's inflation, you want real assets. Yes, the stock market does tend to follow inflation, but it tends to follow right around inflation. I want to focus more on real assets that also provide cash flow, passive income now. That is exactly the type of thing that we're talking about, guys. This is why real estate, you know, I, I think real estate market is going to keep going up. I don't think it's going to keep skyrocketing like you've seen, right? But it is going to continue to stay up there because inventory is low. This is not a repeat of the last recession, the Great Recession, where we had overbuilding happening. We had overappraising happening. Everything was overly done. Here, we don't have a building happening enough. There's still a, a high, high demand for housing. This is why the prices will support. On the flip side, though, I don't care. Even if they went down, I focus more on what kind of income is it generating for me? And guys, you know that might mean you might not keep raising rents. You might raise them a little bit, but you might have to get to a point where, again, because of inflation, we have to stop on those raising of rents. Right now, though, the last several years, rents have been awesome. You know, they see them raising five, 10 plus percent a year um, has not been a bad thing for an investor, right? Um, and of course, for people trying to get housing, they're going to take that rather than trying to buy the skyrocketing prices of housing that's gone up about double in the last four years, right? So this is the kind of thing we're watching right now. It's pretty crazy. And, uh, but that's why I go for real tangible assets. That's why we're looking at things like real estate. We're looking at things like oil. We're looking at things like businesses and things that actually can be controlled. Don't put your money in places where you can't control it. And you're just guessing, right? Don't be like Blinken from Robin Hood Men in Tights or Blinken's up on the watchtower, a blind guy. If you haven't seen it, um, he's the blind guy and he's looking up on the watchtower and they're saying, what are you doing up there? He's like, I'm guessing, I'm guessing nobody's coming. Guys, you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be guessing all the time. The best thing you do is buy things that are more predictable and stable. This is why we talk about alternative investing. Trust me, if you got it, if you got any, if you're wondering about anything to do there, go to our website, take the passive income calculator, go take that right now, see what number pops up. If it's less than twenty thousand dollars, it means you probably should be doing our Wealth Accelerator Academy to prepare yourself to start investing or getting more investments under your belt. And really getting the education and knowledge so you know what to do as the money comes in. If you if that number comes in over 20,000 a year, again, this is on moneyripples.com, our website. If it's over 20,000 a year, 
you should be reaching out to our team and saying, hey, can you confirm these numbers? Can you help us do an analysis to see if this is worthwhile to work with you guys one-on-one to actually get coaching mentoring, connecting you with the right deals, helping you strategize, not giving you investment advice. We are not investment advisors, but really just helping you understand what's available to you. Who are some of the more trustworthy people that have been doing this game for a long time? And where could you be putting that money to generate that good, stable, predictable passive income as we're moving into a very unpredictable territory right now. Again, we're all just guessing, you know, I'm just giving you a little bit of education and hoping that helps you a little bit. The truth is I have no clue exactly what's going to happen because I don't have a crystal ball, but I do know that where I could put my money where it's safer. And that is where I hope you guys also focus on this year is how do I get my money to be more predictable, stable, where it's going to keep growing and get me to be financially independent where I can be in the place to work because I want to not because I have to. So again, guys, go check out our passive income calculator at moneyripples.com. Make it a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later. Visit us online at moneyripples.com for more resources to help you fix money leaks and get your money working harder for you now.